So my first computer was a TRS-80 Color Computer 2. And recently I've contributed to the BitPreserve project uh, by the bald engineer, James Lewis, where I took schematics, old schematics, for the TRS-80 Color Computer 2 and then uploaded it, you know, or captured it with uh, KiCad or KiCad. And uh, I decided to go a step further and make a PCB that I will later try and use to repair one of my broken TRS-80s. And I just got it in the mail. I'm excited. I don't know what to call this. An unboxing, maybe. It's well packed. Got it from JLC PCB. I use them for a lot of stuff. They're cheap, they're fast, and the quality is good. Oh man. Can't tell what this looks like. It was cheap. I got like, I think, five boards for like 130 bucks or something like that. They always send like a little gift. I guess this is some sort of small puzzle that says JLC PCB on it or something. And ah, there they are. I don't know if you can see that, but let me see if I can take one out. Well packed, that's for sure. Oh man. Oh, little balls everywhere. But check that out. This looks really nice. I'm just going to get some more light on this. Uh, maybe not. Later on, I'll put it up against uh, an actual board. I mean, it looks like it's going to fit. But I won't know until I fit it. Alright. Alright, here's my TRS-80. Well, one of them. This is a broken one. And I'm going to try and take it apart while filming with my cell phone. This is rather difficult. Okay. Because my cell phone is way in my view. Alright. You see we got six screws. Yeah. That one's not coming out. Oh no, sadly my vor yeah, I voided my warranty according to that label. Get out of there. Whatever. Alright, let's flip this guy around and see what it looks like on the inside. Okay, let's remove the keyboard. And there is the board. 
So now let me disconnect the transformer here. Actually, it was disconnected because I opened it not too long ago. <clears throat> but let's remove the board. Oh, that screwdriver is a little bit too fat. Or is it this one? Nice thing about this board, I think, I believe, you only need to remove three screws. Oh no, that's not good. Wow, this one doesn't want to budge. I mean, he's coming out, but... It isn't easy. All right, so now I can pull this board out and let's compare it to what I just got in the mail. If I can fit it in here. And I mean, it looks close. It's really close. Huh. Let's fit it in there. And holy moly, it almost fits perfectly. It's a little bit too long, but uh, I think that's, I think I can fix that. So it's too long on this edge here, but for testing, I can... There are no traces. There are no traces here. I can just shave that down. Oh, this is this is nice. I was worried about these two holes here and they line up perfectly. Oh wow. Did I say perfectly? I meant good enough. Oh wow, I think I can make this board work. Anyways, that was my test fit. And I'm excited. All right, here's a quick little video of the board partially assembled. It's looking pretty good. I'm almost there. It's pretty late right now, so I'm gonna stop. And um, I'm assembling it over here with my you know, interactive bomb, which is really, really helpful, really cool. Anyhow, soon I'll be testing uh, the TRS-80 Color Computer 2 clone. All right, after inspecting it some more, it turns out, actually, uh, this looks okay, actually, the distance here, and, and, and the only problem is the mounting hole does not line up. i got to adjust that a little bit. And it turns out what I need to do is uh, bring this back in, I don't know, a couple millimeters, whatever. But, um, you know, if I align everything on this side the way it is, which is what I'm going to do, looks like everything works, um, you know, the connectors back here are going to line up. And so, you know, let me just put them in so you can see. So here's an old RF can, which fits. I do need to adjust this a little bit because although it fits, it's a little bit tighter than I would like it to be. I had to like bend the legs a little bit just to get it to fit. Okay. And here we have the uh, the DIN connectors, which I know fit. All right, all this stuff I found online on DigiKey, and so it looks good there. So I hope you can see this. Again, this this is going to line up because I tested it already uh, with the back of the case. As long as I line this end up, okay, and hopefully I can show you this. So that's a good fit. You know, those connectors are there. Now the reset switch, I couldn't find 
the exact one that it had or anything close to it, so I just used any old reset switch. And it looks like it, it lined up. I'm not worried about that too much. But uh, the RF can, I mean, came out perfect. You know, here's, I mean, you can see it. Uh, the switch is there, you know. Um, and then the DIN connectors are perfectly lined up. You know, I can fit something in there. I don't have to modify the case. I mean, that's the whole idea, not to modify the case. And power switch is there. I'm quite happy so far with this revision, Rev, Rev 1. I think it's, it's, it's close enough where I will decide to populate it and see if it works. So, fingers crossed. board that I designed. Uh, you know, the idea is to have a direct replacement of uh, this version of the Coco 2. At least I would like to keep it as original as possible. Um, the board, you know, other than two or three things that I found with it, mostly worked. I did find that the model I used for the SAM chip had the E and Q lines crossed, so I had to you know, make a little fix here. Um, and then obviously, you know, the board was a little bit longer than it should be. I fixed that already, um, so I'm going to have to reorder some boards. But, you know, aside from that, it, it looks like it's working and loaded basic fine. I was able to write a couple of programs, test it out. Uh, right now I have the RF can, you know, just uh, wired in with a couple of jumbo wires. Megabug is in here. I've got the joystick plugged in. Um, and then I have these connectors here soldered in. I, I need to solder the other ones. Uh, this is built using brand new components. Except, of course, for the ones you can't get anymore, like, you know, the processor, the SAM chip, the VDG. Um, you know, the 6822 and the 6821 and the RAM. But, I mean, I can use this as a base later on to start replacing, you know, some of these hard-to-get components with newer ones. Um, you know, and I can end up with a replacement with mostly new components that I can put into this thing. But anyhow, let's, let's test this guy out. So, turn it on. Get a green screen, that's good. Maybe you can hear it. I hope you can, but Megabug is loaded. It looks pretty good. I had to adjust um, the variable capacitor that's on there to get the colors right because it's an NTSC signal, so it def you know depends directly on the crystal on there. But other than that, I mean, I think it came out pretty damn good. Okay, let me see if I can play with the joystick here with one hand. Okay, down, left, maybe, up, it's hard to do, left, up, down, come on up, ah, down. <laughs> this is hilarious. I think this is uh, probably the best I've ever done. Now I've had obviously better games than this. I've had, but you know what? Let's die. See if we, we can hear it. We gotcha. And there you go. That's the TRS-80 saying. I think it said "We gotcha." But anyhow, yeah, it works. I'm I'm excited. I'm happy with the progress. Uh, you know, the PCB had fewer errors than I anticipated.